Welcome, welcome, welcome everybody to another episode of Sarcasm and Orgasm. I'm your host, Will, and I want to thank you for listening and tuning in. Now, on today's episode, I have a celebrity of the podcast world. I have Miss Francois from the Miss Francois Show. How are you? I am awesome. Oh, should I sit? <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know what? I actually might use that. <laughs> But that's good. Um, thank you so much for joining me. I appreciate you taking the time to sit down and, you know, talk some sarcasm with me. No problem. I'm here. Let's yeah. have some fun. No, right? So I know about you. So why don't you go ahead and tell the people out there about you and your podcast. Okay. So first of all, I, my name, as he said, is Miss Francois. That's MSS for multi, multi-talented and super sexy. I'm originally... <laughs> I'm originally from Trinidad and Tobago. Just so you all know, it actually is listed as one of the sexiest accents in the world. You could Google that. Right. With that said, I do host a show called The Miss Francois Show, which is all about candid conversations, a variety of entertainment. And I basically use humor to help you all with your dysfunctional relationships. Ooh. Oh, shit. God damn it. With the spice and the sauce. So, oh, yeah. <laughs> so, Miss Francois, the sexy debonair and, you know, everything nice. Um, tell me, like, about your podcast and uh, how you have your uh, women empowerment. How did you get to where you are, to where you're going now? How did they come about? Well, it's people like you, man, that pissed me off. Okay. Okay, first of all, first of all, <laughs> no, no, you will not do that because I didn't do anything. I, I want to love you, not abuse you, okay? Okay? Only time I'll abuse you is when we get to an argument about who ate the last cookie. Other than that, no, no. I love you. Love you, all right. <laughs> well, in my life, I I like to say in this, a lot of my relationships, I'm not a hoe, but I had a few relationships, and they did not end well, right? And I, when I look back at things, it has to do with me and my self esteem at that pe- period of time. But because of my failed relationships, I was able to take that, and instead of crying and eating myself or passing all those not bathing or not going to work, I decided to transform it and put it into a show. And when you add humor to anything, it's easier to digest. You not a lot of times when people flip on a channel, you don't want to always hear, "Hi, my name is." You don't want to be bored, so I'll try to keep it entertaining to keep people, you know into it or whatever and if people look up laughter it actually it produces serotonin it produces all these different chemicals that help us to deal with pain so that's the number one thing and again if it wasn't honestly i'm kind of glad for these failed relationship otherwise i wouldn't have been doing half the stuff i'm doing now usually when i'm asked for juices it's probably on her face but, but that's just <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that won't be happening to me because I bite it off before that even happens. So, we'll, we'll see. wow, she she's really coming with it. You see, see all these teeth right here? Yeah. See that? All right. Oh my god, your accent is just so gorgeous. It's so <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so I'm I'm glad to hear that that you you know you took pain and really turned it to pleasure and pleasure to where it's helping you drive forward. A lot of women like yourself should do more of that because. You have way too women, you know, sitting in the corner crying, listening to the Prince of Chardé saying the world is over. So exactly. So exactly, all angry and talking to the same friends who mm-hmm. going through the same things or worse and trying to get advice from them. Yes, it's it, it does it, and I don't understand why women want to go and talk to those angry, bitter bitches when they're going. And they're going to just tell him the same exact thing. Oh, bitch, he ain't no good. And you don't need him. And half the time, that hoe was all by herself on Facebook looking for some dick. So, or oh, sleeping with your man. Yes, yes, I'm <laughs> with your man too. But behind your back, Kiki and ha ha, and saying, girl, we're going to get this together. 
nah uh see men will sit on the porch and be like yeah bro i'm i just can't get over it. they'll just be like man stop being a bitch let's go to a strip club and have a good time see that's what we gonna do Oh, oh really so that's a be- that's the best way of dealing with it going to the strip club yep we'll just pour our sorrows and our money and just donate to the single moms club i mean it, everybody wins so just make sure you're not a therapist or a psychologist okay why <laughs> because you're gonna make a lot you're gonna end a lot of relationships I mean, and have a lot i'm gonna help, help relationships <laughs> not end them because i look at it this way don't cry about something that you broke if you mm-hmm. broke it and you can't fix it then there has to th- have to be a time to where you have to move on like that's what we don't we don't seem to understand as men as women when it comes to relationships is if it was broke before we even started realizing we could fix it then you got to move on you can't heal wounds that you did like you may be able to heal them yes but there are just some wounds that are not going to heal especially we're talking about so, like so wait this is his 17 years of experience talking <laughs> yes for those for and if for those who are listening and not watching i look so young it's like i just went to prom last week that's how young i look like i'm just about to graduate high school next week so <laughs> yes yes in my 17 years miss francois yeah yeah you're not the only one who's had some relationships that left you crying in the dark okay oh yeah. something you want to get off your chest well um <laughs> your chest but that's a different story <laughs> well these are small it wouldn't eh, wouldn't take too long i mean that's the thing. you just go really slow that's fine <laughs> But no, I had a relationship that really crushed me and it it put me in a position to where I just didn't know. And then I did one of the things that us as black people don't do. I went and I got help. And so it helped me heal. And then I found out from all the shit and the things I was put her through as well as me, I wasn't healed from previous traumas. So mm-hmm. bringing that to light really made me see how much of a better person I can be for me and for the next person. And that's, I think that's one of the things we really need to utilize is it's okay to go talk to somebody. It really is. There's nothing wrong with sitting on the couch and telling someone, you know, your troubles and your sorrows in a way to where it can be, you can have positive reinforcement for it, but no one wants to see it that way. Then you just say, oh, I'm gonna see your strength. Man, nigga, you crazy. You don't need to talk to nobody. Let's go ahead, smoke this blunt. Drink, <laughs> get on. Let's get it on. Let's get it on. But sometimes, so true, though. <laughs> but sometimes it just it doesn't always work that way. Like people are not willing to sit down and talk about their issues and their problems. Like sometimes you just want to take the white man's version, just sit down and talk and get an ambient and then have fun. But it just doesn't <laughs> always work that way. <laughs> I think weed is cheaper. <laughs> Yeah, well, some weed you get some. <laughs> <laughs> so let me ask you this before we switch gears. In your relationships that you had, what did you learn from yourself then? Well, now that you didn't know that. Like in the beginning, I was saying it has to do with my self-esteem. I didn't see myself as pretty enough or smart enough. Mm-hmm. And I a lot of times, however, <laughs> however we see ourselves, is that that's what we attract a lot of the times. So I think that because I I don't go into it's his fault this and his fault that. To me, we all need to take responsibility for the part we play in any relationship, regardless how great it is or regardless how good it is, even though, or, or bad. Because you know what, everything is great. Everyone is like, well, I and I and I, but when it's bad, it's him and her and everyone else. So my thing is. Once I did, like people like to say the work, but I'm into like personal development, reading the books, the video, getting, like you said, somewhat of the help you need, wherever you might be in your life or that space. And shit, you can't even talk to me now. <laughs> I think I went a little too. My no, no, a little too no, no, you're good. I'm listening and I'm, I'm taking it in because, you know, sometimes you try to do that and then next thing you know, you're getting a restraining order. <laughs> 
I don't know what kind of life you believe to lead in. <laughs> it's supposed to do with the life of leading. I, I just think it's the people that I'm entertaining that it happens that way. So. Oh, okay. Because first, all I heard was basically you might be smoking weed, going to the, the um strip bar, and then trying to get therapy after all of that. But that's just me. Yeah, because there's that. That's three levels of uh, therapy right there. Oh, oh okay. Uh, you're, you're educating me. Thank you, Will. I'm not educating you. I'm just telling you what I've learned. There's, <laughs> this is no education. This is almost like just bullshitting. So, <laughs> <laughs> so let's talk about this. So here's the segment I want to ask you: Forgive it or fuck it. What's going on in your world and your life or around you to where you might say one of these? I mean, I'm trying to keep my job as long as possible. <laughs> but let's just say, let's say work in general, or let's just say nine to five jobs. Yeah, I would definitely say F it. Well, fuck it, because what other stuff would have, but my jobs, jobs in general. Okay, so I just making sure my manager out there be like, Patrice, what you said on what podcast? But my jo- jobs. Okay. <laughs> yeah, okay. You'll say you're 95. Me, I would say F it traffic because it's like people see the police on the highway and they stop and they want to look and then it just holds up traffic when I'm just trying to get home from a long day. So fuck looking at what's going on. Just move the fuck on. Please. We went we went talk about the fact that you most likely took a look to see what they were looking at, but all right, I hear you. Oh, oh, you really gonna put me out there like that? Is that what okay, if you're gonna come for me, go ahead. Say what you gotta say. <laughs> but I, I said what I said when I said it. Go ahead, say it again. So we get on here again. Go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> you most likely was looking at them, looking at the cops or looking at whatever went on at the side of the road. So everybody started to go slow. No, no. I'm most looking at looking in front of me so I can go or I can merge and get around and go. Because no. he wasn't coming from nowhere important and he wasn't going was nowhere important. Job, thank you very much. <laughs> Your nine to five? Yes, my nine to five that you like to say F it too. So. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Uh-huh, yeah. Um, Jesus, I can't believe she's doing this. But still, uh, so how long have you uh, been podcasting? Uh, my TV show is I just ended at fourth season, so it's four years. So the season four, season four just ended, and it starts back season five in October. So okay. mine is um, a, actually live TV show. I typically do it in a studio because of obviously COVID. The studio, I think, is supposed to open at the end of this year. So everything went to, you know, Zoom and everything virtually. But I also turned it into a podcast. Wow. And yeah, so- mine have a live studio audience and all that stuff. Thank you. Well, I mean, excuse me. Well, can I get an invite to be a guest? I would love that because this face is for TV, not for you know, radio. So, yeah. Mm-hmm. Whatever you believe, yes. That's... You you really going to do that? That's uh, is that I, what, it's what you believe, not what other people believe. No, okay. No, 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 <laughs> no, no. You're the host, so you got the juice. I'm just trying to get it squeezed over this way. Where do you live, anyway, Will? Oh, I'm in Detroit. Oh, okay. Mm. Okay, that's lovely. Wow, you just really gonna skip over like that? Yeah, it's a nice shine over it. That that really is. I just still love that. Thank you so much, Patrice. Thank you. <laughs> you thought I wasn't listening when I was. <laughs> now I know your name, but I'm not. I'll give you that. Out. Yeah. Well, <laughs> you said me. So, um, with your uh, like, where do you uh? Where do you broadcast that? Like, what station is it on that we can uh, watch it? Okay, so as far as a television show, basically it's in 22 Caribbean countries. It's mostly in the Northwest and a lot of the community channels and obviously on YouTube as well. Mm -hmm. And so what are some of the things that you talk about? Well, first of all, I try to always keep it around relationships. And it's only a 30-minute segment. The first five minutes, typically, I would have a comedian on because, I begin, again, everything starts with laughter. The comedian typically would talk around relationships. The next 24 minutes, as I like to say, I have different guests. Sometimes I guess might tell a story. Like one of my first episodes is that she found her husband mistress hiding in the bathroom. 
But even if it's songs like that, it's still where she is after that happened. Sometimes I have a group of men or a group of women saying like the, what they think women want or what they think men want. Sometimes I do relationship movie reviews, sometimes relationship move uh, about books, like act like a lady, think like a man. So we do, we discuss different things, but it always come back to relationships. I mean, I can come on and tell a story where me and my girl were dating the same girl. We didn't know it. Oh, that's hot. I mean, oh, my God. <laughs> oh, wow. Okay, Miss Francois got a little freak of her. Okay, nice. <laughs> <laughs> to each his own. I'm not here to judge nobody. Um, no, no, it, it's okay. You said it loud and clear for everyone to see and hear. So. Okay. <laughs> yes, people, Miss Francois is a freak if you don't know because she's from the Caribbean. So they get, they get a little down and dirty. <laughs> I didn't say I was Jamaican. I said Trinidadian. We got a little oh, more cow. Cool. Oh, really? Okay. Yes. <laughs> okay, so th that's a good one. So what is different from living in the islands to living here in the States for you? What oh, God, Lord, boy. Well, Jesus have mercy. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it's a lot. <laughs> okay. Especially when I first transitioned here, I tell people it was not easy. It's a shock. I come from uh, a place where, as we say, I live in the bush, which is basically country. You walk to school, you walk to church, you have two shoes, you listen to your parents, you listen every adult around you it's called auntie and uncle and your little house is all you know you watch you have like one television one television station it, there's not much right but that's what you know that's what you grew up that's what i love it wasn't an issue i didn't even know i was poor till years later <laughs> then you come to america especially in new york it's busy everyone is rushing everyone just seems angry and that's my initial experience i always tell people it's my experience i don't know what yours is your family that's supposed to be there for you and help you is the one that kicks you out on the street tell you if you're in the house you can't stay up too late you put the light on you need to pay this bill i don't know anything about bills i don't have a good understanding of how america works so it's very scary and sometimes i always say i would erase that but i understand why i wouldn't but it was not easy so to all the immigrants out there i'm praying for you <laughs> so i mean and i understand i remember when i first went to new york we were driving and we were <laughs> we were in midtown and my grandma was driving and next thing you know, you had two people on the bikes just zip past. She was like, oh, my God, where the fuck did they come from? <laughs> <laughs> no, you can't. You can't keep up. It's a lot. It's a lot. Mm -hmm. And people from other states do have issues coming to New York. And sometimes New York, you remember the TV shows or the movies and you're like, you're scared before you even get here. And it's according to which borough, borough you're in. It's it's a different world. It's, to me, New York is like a whole country by itself. Mm -hmm. I've been there. I've been there. I never forget. We was we took a walk through Central Park, and this guy he was doing naked yoga, and no one stopped him. Just no. You one know you joined in. No, no, no. And but here's the weird thing. I don't know if he was just doing yoga or if he was a heroin a heroin addict. He didn't fall over yet. So, <laughs> so that sounds like yoga to me. <laughs> Uh, yeah, either way, he was still getting his exercise on. <laughs> <laughs> and somebody was looking. Mm -hmm, but yeah. I ain't saying I am. So how do you like living in New York so far? Do you like it or you just want to? Well, I don't want nobody stoning me when they see me on the street. Oh, I'll get out of New York. But no, I, I would just say I have adjusted to okay. what New York is. Do I want, keep in mind, Caribbean is always hot. And even though I've been here a very long time, I still don't like the cold. So I do have plans of moving as soon as at least next year, summer. Great. Now my job going to know I'm leaving my, leaving my job. Thank you, Will. <laughs> well, this is what we do. We just tell truth. So if they can't face it, that's on them. Not my fault. Oh, okay. Uh, when I think I'm not my job, I'm going to try to locate you because you're going to give me a place to live, right? I was hoping I could be your assistant. So. Oh, that's, a, that's a different kind of job. If I ain't got no job, I can't pay you, bro. I'll do it for free. Oh, now I'm scared. <laughs> oh, look at your face. Like, what? Goodness. Come on now. You gotta think of the bigger picture. Don't be so small minded. I know you <laughs> I know you live in America, but don't let it cripple your your <laughs> come on now. <laughs> Shut the hell up. <laughs> hey, don't come for me, all right. I'm just trying to help you be a more advanced logical thinker. Mm. 
definitely have to block your number and your email. All right, no problem, Will. Thank you for that advice. Oh, you're welcome. Anytime, anytime, knowing that you're not going to use it anyway. So it's whatever. <laughs> <laughs> so, so far, what has uh, been like your biggest experience or your biggest gain doing your TV show and almost becoming a public figure? How do you feel? Well, the, the funny thing is, since I started the show because I was angry, and I remember the first season I had, the first season I had celebrated this big, you know, season one had all these people, whatever the case might be. And someone asked me a question, like, how do you feel to be impacting other women's lives? And I was like, what? I don't care. <laughs> I was like, this is for me. <laughs> if you learn something good for them. <laughs> but <laughs> as time progressed, you know, think, <laughs> at least I was honest, right? This answer you can say. <laughs> like, I don't know. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Because even my friend who was with me yesterday, she's like, who raised you? You're such an animal. I'm like, it's the truth. I don't get it. Why do people get mad when I answer these questions? But as time progressed and I learned different things and understood different things and I became happier and actually started fully loving what I do. I It is amazing when people from different Caribbean countries either hit me up in Instagram or Facebook, see this sort of show or something being impactful or make them laugh. Whatever little thing that... It could be, I think, I find a lot of joy from that. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, I mean, it's good that you saw the good and the bad of it all. You know, it might have took you like a year or two, but that's good. That's good. <laughs> we can fight, lady. I'm ready. <laughs> I'm not good at fighting. It's only my mouth. I'm <laughs> I'm a runner. <laughs> yeah. I'm a P-U-S-S-Y and proud. Oh, wow. Well, at least you can say proudly. I mean, it is Gay Pride Month, so, you know. <laughs> My be just a little bit aware of what you do. Yeah. You got a flag just so you kiss you went away. Oh, God. <laughs> but um, one last thing before I get you out of here. Uh, if people want to find you and get in contact with you, uh, you know, talk with you and such, how can they get a hold of you? Well, first of all, right here it says, the, well, dear. The Miss France will show. I make it easy for everyone. You check out the website, www.missfrancois.com. But in any case, I'm on all social media that matters. <laughs> I'm definitely on YouTube. So it's pretty easy. Okay, great. Well, I, I definitely will hit you up, you know, looking for a job. Say you promised me I got it on tape. So. <laughs> no, I don't speak no English. <laughs> what? <laughs> No, you speak English very good. Very good. <laughs> but yes, people, this is Miss Francois from the Miss Francois show. Make sure you follow her and check her out. All social medias everywhere. And we mean everywhere because she's from the island. So you'll see her more than you see anybody else. So <laughs> make sure you check us out. And thank you so much for joining Miss Francois. I really appreciate it. I know you're you tired. You should. Yes, yes. I'm, I'm giving you your, your flowers. So thank you so much for joining me. And this has been another episode of Sarcasm and Orgasms. I'm Will, and I'll talk to you soon.